Hello and welcome to this video on equations of state. At the end of this video you will be able to define what an equation of state is, identify the common features of equations of state, calculate the pressure or molar volume using an equation of state, and explain the trade-off between accuracy and complexity for an equation of state. And so the reason that we're interested in equations of state is because of the, the limiting nature of using tables and charts. So when we're designing something, um, then that design always undergoes lots and lots of changes. So, so other people change other bits of the process um, and then someone else changes stuff and then you're left to design uh, one bit of the process uh, again and again and again okay so so it always needs to be updated lots and lots of times now that's just in design if we're talking about optimization then um, you may have to do that uh, many more times or it may not even be possible to use a chart at all okay because many optimization tools uh, actually have to have equations as inputs so it's not actually possible to to use charts uh, to use things like NIST when you're doing an optimization exercise okay so so especially for optimization we have to have an equation based approach Now, what our uh, major tool for doing that in this course um, are our equations of state. Now, uh, this is just equations of state are just an equation, okay? And so, so what they do is they relate one thermodynamic property, okay? So with two other thermodynamic properties. And in principle, you could do this with anything. You could relate pressure to temperature and density enthalpy to temperature and volume, entropy to pressure and enthalpy. Okay, so it is conceivable to, to come up with equations for all these different combinations. But the most common combination for people to use is that they have uh, either the, the pressure is equal to some function of temperature and volume, or alternatively uh, what people use is the volume is equal to a function of uh, temperature and pressure okay so there are some other choices but these are the these are the two choices that we are going to be concentrating on in this course now the the simplest equation of state is the ideal gas law and it does exactly what I'm talking about above so so the the pressure of an ideal gas is equal to a function of temperature and volume which is embodied in our familiar RT on V or PV is equal to RT <coughs> now as we discussed ideal gases are good in some situations but they can't account for intermolecular interactions so we need equations of state that can account for the fact that molecules interact. Now the person who made the first really good attempt at doing this was van der Waals. So, so van der Waals was a, a magnificent scientist in, in many, many ways. So he won a Nobel Prize. He was the first person to produce liquid helium. Now the insight that he had was that he said, well, I'm going to base this or base my equation of state off the ideal gas equation so so the ideal gas equation rt on v and so what he said is i'm going to add an attraction term okay so this is the attraction term here and in addition to that i'm going to add a repulsion term and so that's this term here now these terms have some very very uh, useful properties okay so so what we see uh, with the repulsion term here is that as V goes to B then pressure will go to infinity okay that's just saying that we can't compress molecules into an infinitely small space okay and of course that makes complete sense we know that with uh, solids so once we've got a solid uh, it takes enormous pressure even to to go from the space occupied by uh, graphite to the space occupied by diamonds 
okay so so that's one very important feature the the other feature here is that the um, is that the attractive term is negative okay so which is what we would expect so that uh, it takes less pressure for molecules to occupy less space and that it's got this v squared term on the bottom now what this relates to then is if it's one on the volume squared that's similar to saying one on the separation between molecules to the power of six okay so so van der Waals tapped into uh, what we knew or what he knew about molecular interactions remember he was the one who came up uh, with the equation for um, for dispersion interactions now the other important feature of this equation which makes it uh, very very useful is that the parameters in the equation okay so the parameters of a and b are simply functions of the critical properties okay so so as long as I know the critical properties of something then I can write the equation of state for it okay I can calculate what the pressure is as long as I know the volume or equally I can solve for the volume if I know what the pressure is so this is the beauty of equations of state is that uh, they tend to be transferable between things okay. now as an example so here we're going to to look at argon and so so the steps that I take to use the equation of state are the first thing I need is to get the the critical parameters for my uh, for my fluid and then I calculate my parameters for my equation of state so calculate a and calculate B now in calculating these things the the units uh, critical okay so so I find it easiest always just to drop everything back to uh, to Pascal's um, so then and moles per meter cubed and that sort of thing okay so so if you're working in that basis it makes it very easy to uh, to keep things on track once I've got my parameters then it's a matter of substituting in the the density that I've been given okay so so I can go from density to a volume and then once I've got my volume then I'm just substituting that into my equation of state and so once I've got all that then I'm able to calculate my pressure for uh, this particular fluid in this case argon at 166 Kelvin okay so so like I said it's just an equation so some good science has gone into making them but in terms of using them to calculate a pressure it's quite straightforward and so if I do this uh, in Excel or MATLAB or something like that I can compare uh, my equation of state okay so my equation of state is this line here in uh, sorry uh, about that is my line here in red versus my uh, ideal gas equation okay so here in green and also my uh, real data here in black and so what we see is is that very early on the ideal gas equation starts to have a significant error okay so so at this temperature it only applies up to uh, probably only about a density of two kilomoles per meter cubed this very simple equation of state the van der Waals equation of state is actually able to uh, model the argon behavior up to a much higher density okay so so this is is quite an achievement in 1873 by van der Waals now if we give this an even more stringent test okay and so later on in the course we'll figure out how to do this ourselves but if we calculate the phase coexistence using the equation of state what we see is is that the van der Waals equation of state so our van der Waals equation of state in red actually struggles to reproduce the vapor density the vapor coexistence density and really really struggles uh, reproducing the the liquid density 
Okay, so so experimental data is here, and so we can uh, so this was the sort of thing that gave motivation for people to look for better equations of state. And so one such equation, uh, something called the, the Peng-Robinson equation of state. And so we see that the Peng-Robinson equation of state has a, uh, a much better fit with the experimental data on the vapor side and a better but still not particularly great fit with the liquid density on the liquid side. And so these two equations of state, okay, so the, the Van der Waals equation of state and the Peng-Robinson equation of state both fit into something called cubic equations of state where they both have uh, this ideal gas term here with a repulsion taken into account and then they have this attractive term over on this side divided by some function of V squared plus some other stuff. Okay, so, so, so there's lots of different types of these uh, cubic equations, and but we'll concentrate in the next couple of slides on the Peng-Robinson equation because it's quite widely used. Now, the reason that the Peng-Robinson equation of states works better than the Van der Waals equation of state is essentially it has more parameters to play with. It's a more complicated equation, and so you would expect and hope that the fit is better than the van der Waals equation of state. Now even though it's more complicated, okay, so it still uh, is just a function of temperature, volume, and then our constants here are functions of critical properties, okay, B is a function of critical properties. We've added a function of temperature here, Okay, so that's this term over here. And then we've got some additional parameters, kappa, which in turn uses something called the eccentric factor. Now what the eccentric factor does, and this is the real contribution that uh, Peng and Robinson made, was to say, well, if I look at a particular reduced density, okay, so we're looking at a reduced density of 0 0.7, if I look at this temperature, then I can see that here, my uh, this is a good place to look at the fact that I don't really get very good corresponding states between these things. And so if I look at the vapour pressure at this reduced temperature, um, then I can calculate something called the eccentric factor. Okay, so, so the eccentric factor really accounts for the uh, the failings of uh, corresponding states. Okay, so, so it's able to take into account the fact that these curves are actually different shapes for different things. Now, another type of equation of state is something called the virial equation of state. Okay, and this is something that we'll look at. But essentially, it's the same sort of thing. So we have... Uh, pressure here, okay, and then it's a function of of some volume, okay. So, so this is just an exp a Taylor expansion of the ideal gas, and what we supply are these parameters. Now, these parameters can be equations themselves, okay. So, so they might be a function of temperature themselves. One very useful virial equation of state was that proposed by Lee Kessler. Okay, so so this is a in terms of equations of state it's quite accurate while still requiring just the critical parameters of the process or of the fluid I mean. Now when we use it, I'm not going to show what the equation is here, it's a bit long, um, we see that we get a much much better fit with the experimental data for the Lee Kessler, okay, so that's along this line here, compared with the Peng Robinson, which is sitting out over here. Okay, so so as we add complexity, just trust me for the moment that Lee Kessler is more complex than the Peng Robinson, then we add accuracy. Okay, but there's a limit to this. And so what we need to know is that all equations of state are wrong but some of them are less wrong than others. 
so what we need to do is we need to we need to validate what our equations are and whether they're useful for what we're interested in modeling okay. you never want to use a more complicated equation of state than you have to if you can use ideal gas use it if you can use Peng Robinson use it if you need more accurate than that use Lee Kessler if you need more accurate than that well you're starting to get into serious equations of state okay so so you always have to validate and use the simplest available now one thing that I've avoided here is I've been talking about equations of state of just a single fluid okay for methane for water what I haven't talked about is what happens if we have a mixture of these things what's the equation of state then and we will address this later on okay so as a concluding remark then what I'll say is is that equations of state are something that you'll be using uh, this semester uh, if you're doing G3020 okay so so when you're choosing a thermodynamic model this is the basis that we're coming from so to recap equations of state are models that help us model fluid behavior so that we can design and optimize processes they vary a lot in complexity more complex is more accurate but it's also more difficult to implement it is important to validate the equation of state that you're going to use it needs to be useful for the process that you're interested in okay thanks for your time